Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pammy and on here I'm reviewing all things clean beauty. So thank you so, so much for tuning in with me today. Now in today's video, I'm going to be revisiting the brand Jane Iredale. Now I have already reviewed the brand Jane Iredale on my channel, so I am going to link that review up in the cards and also down in my description box. So you can have a look if there's any sort of product that I will be mentioning in this video that I'm not gonna be putting on my face and reviewing. It is most likely in that video. So there's gonna be some reoccurring products in this video, but also some brand new stuff, some brand new releases by Jane Iredale that I got my hands on. Beautiful illuminating lights palette, you guys. I cannot wait to show you this palette today. I also have some products that are actually new to me that are not necessarily new releases. And I have some old goodies and some products maybe that were more like misses to me and that I just wanna mention again why they failed me, why they did not work for me and so forth. Also you guys, if you are completely unfamiliar with this brand, I do wanna just mention that this is a really amazing, natural, more organic like makeup and skincare brand. They also carry skincare. I've never tried any of their skincare. I've only tried their makeup so far. In this video, we're only gonna focus on the makeup so their makeup is actually also marketed as skincare makeup, which means that they're actually taking care about what they're actually putting in their formulations. Most of the time are organic. They're also certified by EcoCert. The entire line is completely cruelty free. Now you guys, um, not everything is vegan though. I would suggest to always click on the website. They do have vegan and gluten information with each product. Click on it and it will definitely state if a product is vegan or not. Sometimes they are using beeswax and formulas so the product is gonna be automatically vegetarian, not vegan. Now I've tried to really get products that are very vegan friendly but I would suggest and always go double check if that is your concern. I am actually so so excited to be giving you this review, play around with some of these new products by Jane Iredale, some of these uh, old favorites of mine as well so without no further ado let's just go barefaced and let's get this review rolling. All right, you guys, so I am barefaced right now and ready to start off with a primer by Jane Iredale. So this is the Smooth Affair for Oily Skin Facial Primer and Brightener. Also have a Smooth Affair Facial Primer and Brightener, which is not aimed at oily skin, but for normal skin. I actually had that one, but it was super radiant. I mean, I was glowing the house with that primer, so I actually gave it to my best friend. Still kind of the same finish, but this is better for combo skin. I mean, I have combo skin. I don't necessarily have oily skin, but I do get oily in my T-zone. So I thought this would be a little bit better. It is definitely a little bit better. It's not as glowy as their normal primer. It's a nice primer. Just be mindful. This primer does contain a bunch of essential oils, citrusy oils. It also really smells like citrus. Um, so if you're not good with those kind of ingredients, maybe stay away from this primer because it's definitely one of these primers that does contain some essential oils. It doesn't really contain essential oils like I just said, but it contains orange peel extract and grapefruit fruit extract. So just that you guys are aware, the very first ingredient in this primer is water followed by cyclopenta xyloxane. That is, I think, a silicone, so it's not silicone free. We have dimethicone PEG 10 slash 15. We also have coconut alkanes. In terms of what it does, it, it's like a gel cream. Um, I feel like this primer smoothens out my skin, gives it a lot of radiance. Once this is applied to the skin, it looks very, very radiant, very, very shiny. I don't think this really fills in pores or anything. It's just kind of like gives you like this sort of like smooth, radiant, glowy skin. I don't think it does anything in terms of evening out my skin tone as well. So in that sense, it's a nice primer, but I think there are better products on the market for maybe less money. So usually I would move on to the foundation, but today I do want to do things a little bit different because I have two products that I actually want to apply right now. So this is the Enlightened Concealer and this retails for $30. So this does come in two shades. I have the shade one. It's kind of like a peachy corrective concealer. And I do have some veins that kind of pop through sometimes. 
I've tried this out. It's really nice. It's a little bit more of a stiffer formula. It's not very creamy, very moisturizing, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I always just go in and just warm it up with my finger. And the only thing I really want to do is just correct this part and maybe also here because I do have a blue vein popping through. So I'm just going to put it on here just for now. I'm going to take a brush first. I'm going to take a sponge. There's a lot of concealers with Jane Iredale, you guys, and I've pretty much tried them all out, so I can give you a good review. I like this a lot for my under eye. I feel like this has a really good consistency. It also just gives me a nice base for the concealer to actually go on top of it. It's not creasing or anything. Like, I feel like with a brush, this product really does streak, so I prefer to take a small sponge and go in like that. It's also... A dry sponge so it's not dampened. So the corrector is applied so let's move on to the concealer that I want to use for my under eye. So this is the circle slash delete concealer and this retails for $32. Sometimes liquid concealers kind of crease on me. Um, not so much with these pot concealers I find so I was really excited to try this one out because actually this one has two colors. And I freaking love that. I have this in the shade 1. 1 is definitely more of a yellow undertone. They also have another shade, another combination with peach. Uh, I picked up the yellow one because I have this massive peach corrector. This enlightened one right here. So I don't necessarily need another peach one. I feel like this is really cool having two different shades because you can mix them. You can literally brighten up with this shade whatever you want to brighten up. And this one actually matches my skin tone pretty well. This product also is not vegan because it does contain beeswax. And I'm going to go into this lighter shade and put it right here in the corner of my eye. The darker shade right here. And you can see it's still pretty like bright, you know, it's not dark or anything. So I'm not sure what somebody with a darker skin tone would do. That's the only thing. And I'm going to take my sponge again and... I'm just going to blend it out. I feel like this has so much coverage and I have not applied a lot of product, you guys. I barely have. This looks so stunning. It also hydrates your under eye area pretty well. It really does not look cakey. Because sometimes I'm scared with part concealers that they are a little bit too stiff and too cakey. This is a little bit more on the waxy side. So it's going to kind of give you a lot of shine, a lot of coverage. Just look at my nose, how red that is in comparison to everything else now. I really do like this. I think this is a really cool product, especially with the two shades. I just wish they had a little bit more of a shade selection so that people with a deeper skin tone could also kind of benefit from it, that this is a yellow sort of concealer? I don't think so. I don't think this is too yellow, you know? I think the Kosas one actually has more of a yellow undertone than this. I'm always looking for a good concealer and this one is its actually really, really lovely. Now in my other video, you guys, I showed you this foundation, the Beyond Matte. I still don't have my right shade. This is the shade M3 and I think I mixed it with a lighter shade, but I gave that shade to one of my friends. So I'm kind of like, you know, left with this and um, it's super peachy, this shade. I don't know, I should have taken like M5 or something. I mean, I talk in length about this foundation in my other video. You can definitely go and watch that because I'm not going to use this today. But yeah, I still feel like it's completely wrong to call this foundation Beyond Matte. It's Beyond Dewy, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> if they would have called this foundation Beyond Dewy, I would have completely agreed. But to call it Beyond Matte is a little bit misleading. That's still my opinion on it. I think it's an okay foundation. Gives me somewhat a medium coverage. I don't think it's completely full coverage at all. I think it moves around a little bit too much if you don't set it. So all in all, it's not necessarily my favorite foundation. But the product I'm about to use in today's video, you guys, I freaking love it. I really, really do. It's like one of the best products I've 
ever tried and one of the best products from their line. So this is the Glow Time Full Coverage Mineral BB Cream SPF 25 and this retails for $50. I keep on saying foundation, you guys. It's actually a BB cream, but to me, this is more than a BB cream. This gives you such a beautiful finish. It makes your skin look like super natural, full coverage. Um, and a satin finish. Definitely such a beautiful skin-like natural satin finish. 100% vegan and always cruelty-free. So this one is vegan. So this contains an SPF 25 or an SPF of 17. It depends on what shade you're gonna get. And this is UVA and UVB sun protection. It's also water resistant for 40 minutes. Reef safe. It's recommended by the Skin Cancer Foundation as an effective broad spectrum sunscreen. So the active ingredient in this is titanium dioxide oxide uh, this is the sunscreen protector 17.5 percent so the very first ingredient in this is water so it's a water-based foundation followed by coconut alkanes cocoa caprylate caprate if you're not good with coconut derived ingredients this does contain coconut derived ingredients but it does not contain the real deal so pure virgin coconut oil doesn't contain that but there are coconut alkanes um, and such, so they're actually derived from coconuts. We also have the PEG 10 dimethicone again. We also have grapefruit extract, bitter orange fruit extract, apple fruit extract, and all of those are pretty high on the list. I have the shade BB4, medium light with neutral undertones. Yeah, that is me. So I'm just gonna start off with a little bit of this. And this smells so much like citrus you know grapefruit all of that i'm gonna take my clove and hello perfecting buffer brush and just go in definitely such a radiant finish a very glowy i mean it's called glow time but to be honest it just the glow looks so natural me with my greasy combo skin i would usually not go for a finish like that but i just love it i will say this is a little bit more of a thicker sort of creamier consistency i mean it's still a bb cream it's not some liquidy foundation i cannot touch my face too much with this foundation because it's gonna come off and i did not apply much product i will say the wear time on this is pretty good i can wear this for six hours straight after six hours i will definitely see that my t-zone gets a little bit oilier so if i would retouch it it would be completely fine if i just have some setting powder on top of it it's fine i mean it's not completely losing it though you know it's not completely breaking apart to a point where i'm just like this looks unwearable not at all i feel like it has a pretty good decent wear time it just looks so stunning so smooth on the skin too just really really lovely so i briefly want to apply this product just a little bit so you guys can see it not that i need it but i just want to show you so this is the active light under eye concealer and this retails for 30 dollars so this is their under eye concealer that comes in a pan format like this i have tried this out however i think the part concealers make my under eye look a little bit more flattering than this. This did crease a little bit on me. It looked a little bit cakey. It wasn't that easy to blend on my under eye. And I mean, that's okay. I have this, and what shade do I have? I have the shade two, which is described as a medium yellow. All I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna brighten up the center of my face. I actually think it looks better on the middle of my face than on my under eye. Maybe also on spots like here. I mean, the foundation has done a pretty good job. I feel like Jane Iredell has so many concealers. My favorite one is this one. I'm gonna use this as an eye primer. This might be a terrible idea, you guys, because I've never tried this. So why not? Let's just try it together. I'm definitely gonna use the light shade. I'm gonna try and blend it out with a brush. I'm kind of glad I tried it now, but uh, there was no guarantee that this won't crease because my eyelids are super oily, you guys. Everything will crease on my eyelids, so 
we shall see if this is going to crease. I'm definitely going to, I'm going to set this to with some powder. I'm just going to quickly use this powder by 14E Cosmetics because I just know it always works, usually. I actually do have a powder by Jane Iredale and let's use that to actually set my face. So the powder that I have by Jane Iredale is the Beyond Matte HD Mattifying Powder and this retails for $34. So nice. I love the fact that they're doing a refillable powder. This case by Jane Iredale is actually really, really slim. I love that because I travel with this powder everywhere and I always carry this with me. First off, it's a nice mirror in here. And then this powder is really nice. It's the mattifying HD one. So it's actually a powder that is aimed for camera. It will look good on camera. It's a super nice powder. It's the shade Translucent. They also have a shade Lilac, which is a purple powder. Uh, I got this one. Uh, it still looks like a little bit pigmented, but it comes up completely translucent on your skin. You guys, the refillable compact is actually $18. So they have this in silver and they have this in rose gold. I picked up the rose gold one. I really like this powder. This powder is super nice. It's uh, really mattifying not cakey, looks very good on the skin. It's very finely milled, super, super nice. So I'm also gonna set my under eye with this a little bit and I'm gonna take a Spectrum B08 brush. I mean, this is such a mattifying powder. I really like it. Such a good mattifying powder too because it's just not gonna make you look cakey or anything. Yeah, they have an amazing matte loose finish powder as well. I mean, I have the pressed version because I kind of wanted a pressed one to just on the go. I think it sets your makeup into place pretty well. It also works on my under eyes pretty well. So that's why I always have this with me because it's just such a safe powder that will always work. My base is all done, all set. So yeah, let's actually move on to the fun part and let's continue with bronzing blush and highlight. In terms of bronzer or contour, like the thing is with Jane Iredale, um, all of her bronzers I think have carmine in them. So I was always very reluctant to get any sort of blush, any sort of, um, sort of bronzer by them. So I decided to actually pick up this new release by Jane Iredale because guess what? It's vegan. Yay, and it's an entire complexion palette. So exciting. And so this is the Illuminating Lights face palette and this retails for $69. This is such a nice palette. I love the color story. I immediately, when I saw this, I was like, this is superb. It comes in this really nice packaging. I really love the packaging. The mirror on here is also nice. And you guys, let's talk about all these beautiful shades in here. I'm gonna insert some swatches and yeah, describe the shades to you. So in the very first row, we have blush and bronzer. So the very first blush shade is called Gleam and it's a shimmery light apricot. The shade Beam is a shimmery guava. The bronzer is called Glow and it's a luminous bronze. The lower row has two highlighters and one finishing powder. First highlighting shade is called Twinkle. It's a shimmery sheer peach. The second one is called Starlight. It's a shimmery sheer gold. And the finished powder is called Moonlight Soft Yellow Pearl. So I'm actually gonna start off with a bronzer called Glow. And I was so worried that this is a shimmery bronzer. I was like, this is not gonna look good, but it actually looks amazing. I love this color. This color is so stunning. I was really surprised. I'm gonna tap it off a little bit. You guys, this bronzer is so stunning. I love it. You can also contour your nose with it because the undertone of this bronzer is so neutral. It's not overly pigmented, so you can really just brush it out and build up the pigmentation. And I love that. I'm so glad this is not a palette that is highly pigmented because I just sometimes really don't like that. I go overboard so easy with things. So in that sense, it's really handy that this is a little bit less pigmented, but it's pigmented enough. And I just love it. I love the glow this 
gives me. So in terms of blush, I love this blush right here, this guava shade. It's my favorite one. I don't think I'm gonna use Gleam, maybe a little bit. The blushes are definitely a little bit shimmery, but still not overly shimmery that, you know, it's not gonna look good. It's actually gonna look amazing. But first I'm gonna go into Beam, just tap it off my hand a little bit. you guys i feel like this is so pretty it's very glowy though it's very radiant very illuminating the blush but still it doesn't really bother me you know it still looks just really glowy and refreshed i mean i'm glad i put on the hd powder before otherwise i would be maybe too glowy with everything i'm gonna go on to my ilia complexion brush i like this brush because it's literally like the size of the apples of my cheek just gonna tap it off. So this color combo of Beam and Gleam, I love it. It's so pretty, looks just very natural and it's not like super shimmery. It just reflects the light. So my bronzer is on, my blush is on, let's move to the highlighters. I feel like I'm gonna go into Starlight a little bit. I really like this. Like, I feel like Twinkle is just too peachy. It, this looks a little bit more like it kind of like pops through. With this, I thought it was more almost like a, a blush than it was a real highlighting shade for me. I'm just gonna try and just run it a little bit on here. If this is too shiny for you, this finish powder will take it down. It comes up pretty translucent on the skin, you guys. So in that sense, this is actually really cool that they included that. The only shade is this Twinkle shade. This is the only shade that I don't get much use out of because it's just too peachy for me. You know, if I would do a whole face of like peach stuff, I would probably reach for it, but just not on an all day basis. I think this shade Starlight is a little bit prettier. Oh, talking about highlighters, I actually have something that I could use a little bit on here as well, on my cheekbones, just to show you a different option with the highlighters. So actually I do have a highlighting pencil. You could actually use this for your eye or on your cheeks or wherever you want. So this is the double dazzle highlighter pencil. I have this in a white and pink colorway and I tried this on my eyes and unfortunately I did not like it on my eye. So it's actually called eye highlighter pencil. This was way too creamy on my eyes, you know, it just would completely sort of disturb the eyeshadow that I had already on and I just wanted to do my inner corner with it. Not a good idea. This is a highlighter that I like. It works lovely on my cheeks, really does not work on my eyes. I mean, you can tell. <laughs> This is, that's why it doesn't work. I mean, even the concealer, it's creasing like crazy. I'm gonna remove this. I need to prep my eyes correctly. Okay, let's actually take my Lila B1. Let's actually move on to my brows because I do have some brow products. So this is the retraceable brow pencil and this retails for $24. I think it's the wrong shade and I don't like it that much. Uh, the only brow pencil that is not vegan is the dark brunette one. I have brunette, it's just not my shade and I don't really like this pencil to start off with. I'm just not a big fan. Um, it's one of these really like small round pencils. I always prefer a triangle because with a triangle like the eco brow you can imitate a hair so much better. This is just round and usually does not really hold that well so I'm gonna try and just go into my eyebrows where they're a little bit sparser and fill them in now the color is gonna be super wrong such a red undertone it's not just that the color is off I feel like when I apply this and I spool through it 
It's just removing all the product again. It's such a frustrating formula. It doesn't do much good. So I'm gonna take my eco brow, this eco brow one. It's just holds, it's immediately filling in. I don't have to waste that much product. You guys, the next product, I'm also a little bit fussy about that one because it's a brow gel and I'm not a big fan. Now they do have tinted ones and they actually came out with a soft black, which is a new shade. I have the clear one. You guys, it's not my favorite formula. Like this to me, it feels like I put literally aloe vera gel just straight up on my eyes. It just does not dry down for the life of me. And also it's kind of gross, like having this being translucent. <laughs> it's also such a clumpy formula. Like I feel like it's leaving clumps in my eyebrows. I never comb my eyebrows upwards, uh, so maybe it's better for people who kind of need to style them. I just want them to be filled in, be in place, so I don't have an eyeliner and I don't have any of the eyeshadows. I have these eye sheer liquid uh, eyeshadows that I used in my other video. Now they have eyeshadow kits that retail for $59 and you get like five shades. Um, none of these color stories really spoke to me. I just have so many eyeshadows that when I saw all of these kits, I was just like, mm, maybe come fly with me. But honestly, I have all of these colors in different formulas. So I can't really say much about the eyeshadows because I've never tried them. I do have a mascara by them though, and I have a lip product. So I'm just gonna do my eyeshadow off camera and I'll be back and then we'll put on the remaining things. So you guys, I'm back. I just did my eyeshadow. I used the Tiny Marvels palette. As you can see, I'm not wearing any mascara. So that's the next product by Jane Iredale that we're gonna review. So this is the longest lash thickening and lengthening mascara and this retails for $35. So I had the same mascara in my other review. They have two other mascaras. They have a Pure Lash Lengthening Mascara and they have a Pure Lash Mascara. My opinion on this mascara has not changed from last time. I like this mascara. It is nothing out of this world, nothing mind-blowing. It's literally just a very effective mascara. This mascara won't give you raccoon eyes, it won't flake, it won't smudge. So in that sense, it's pretty bulletproof. Now, for it to be the longest lash, I don't think so. I mean, I have other lengthening mascaras that are much better than this. Uh, the thing is, I like this brush. It's like a typical fiber brush. It's a really nice brush, actually. I'm gonna curl my lashes, apply it, and then tell you what I'm thinking about it. I mean, I've used this mascara so many times in my all-day life because it's just a good everyday mascara. This formula is so non-clumpy, it really separates your lashes, but it's not the most lengthening mascara on planet Earth. I mean, it lifted them up, but it's not like spectacular, you know? This is a really good everyday mascara because it won't smudge, it's not clumpy, and it just gives you lovely lashes, you know? So yeah, for your everyday life, I love this mascara. It's really good. So the only thing still left to do are my lips and I actually do have the new liquid lipstick release. So this is the new Beyond Matte Lip Fixation Lip Stain and this retails for $32. So I think they've only launched this product recently or they've just added new shades. I have the shade Compulsion, which is described as a matte mauve brown pink. It looks so different in real than actually on the website. The colors are completely wrong. I mean, this is so much peachier than on the swatch. It looks so much darker online. I've tried this out before. Now I will say, I'll definitely need a lip liner and uh, a lip balm. It's a lip stain. It's a liquid lipstick, you guys. So basically it's gonna dry down completely matte. And it's not too drying, this one, but I still feel like I would like to go in with a lip balm before I'm applying it. So I'm gonna take my Lip Whip by Cary Grant. I love this one, my favorite lip balm. 
So, okay, I'm gonna line my lips and I think I don't I don't have a lip liner by them. Not sure if there's any vegan options. I'm gonna take my Lily Lolo and Soft Nude, line my lips. But I'm gonna just apply it. It's really nice. In the beginning, this goes on and it's super creamy, but it's gonna dry down completely matte, like completely matte. It's actually a really nice formula. It gives you a lot of pigment with a very thin layer. In the beginning, it kind of moves around. You're thinking like, wow, this is the most moisturizing sort of lip product ever. But now that it's gonna dry down on top of my lip balm, yeah, it's already dry. It looks so nice though. I thought this was a little bit more of a cool toned shade, the shade compulsion that I have, and it's really not. It's When I saw it, I was like, wow, this is actually warm toned. I thought it would be cool toned. Also, another thing is this won't move. So if you're wearing a face mask and you want a lip product that won't go anywhere, this will not transfer, it's literally bulletproof. Um, this wears a very, very long time as well. That's everything I have by Jane Iredale. Oh my gosh, okay, so that's it, you guys. That's my finished look, only using Jane Iredale products. Now, if I would recommend any of these products, I love the concealer, I love this foundation. I also really like the Matte HD powder. This palette, I love this palette. I'm so happy I got this because, I mean, all these colors really speak to me and I just think the formula is amazing. Also, you guys, this could be such a nice gift for the holidays. That's everything I have to say about Jane Iredale as a brand. I'm just very, very happy that I tried out more products by the brand. Now I kind of know what's worth it and what maybe not worth it. Do let me know in the comment section below if you have tried out anything by Jane Iredale or would you like to try out anything? Do you have any more questions? Or if you've tried out something, did you like it? Did you not like it? I would be really curious to know. Also, you guys, if you have enjoyed this review, please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. That would be very much appreciated. And if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, I would absolutely love to have you here. You just have to hit that subscribe button. You can also ring the bell to stay notified about my upcoming videos. And I shall be seeing you on here very, very soon with the next one. So please take care. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.